3.30 a.m. Must keep studying. So after seeing the title of this video, you might be thinking that's what my daily schedule and struggle looked like while in college. But honestly, I was still able to enjoy my life, do extracurriculars, do research, and even hang out with my friends. I think it was just because I was very efficient with my time. So if you don't know, I'm Fasal Masood and I'm a first year medical student. So as an undergraduate, I majored in biomedical engineering and I also jumped through a lot of pre-med hoops and took extra courses just to meet the pre-med requirements. So in this video today, let's talk about how I was able to maximize my time as an undergraduate to allow me to get a 4.0 GPA as a pre-med engineer. I'm going to structure this video as follows. So step one, I'll be going through my transcript. Step two, I'll be talking about schedule recommendations. Step three, I'll be talking about study habit recommendations. And four, I'll finally talk about if I think this 4.0 was worth the time and effort. All right, so let's take a quick look through this transcript. Bye, C. All right, freshman year, good first semester, good second semester. Third semester, we took Orgo. Fall 2018. Spring 2019, we took Orgo 2. We took some other bioengineering courses. Fall 2019, we took quantum chemistry. So that was a lot of work. Spring 2020, we took some more bio -E courses, gene editing lab, and some other things. But all in all, that was a transcript. Those were courses I took. Yeah. Okay, so now that we looked through my transcript, let's talk about some schedule recommendations that you can use in college or beyond. The first tip that I have, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is do a little bit every single day. So in college, a lot of people fall prey to the trap of studying right before the exam or a few days before the exam. But honestly, as soon as an exam was finished and we started learning more material, I was studying day one again after the exam. So it's not like I would leave all my studying for the week before the exam or two weeks before the exam. I would study right as we started learning the material and I would do a little bit every single day. And so I found when it came time to the exam, I honestly wasn't really even stressed. I already knew everything I needed to know and I just had to polish up a little bit. Now some days you'll obviously have more work than others with homework, problem sets, essays, so on and so forth. And of course I was no different, but still on my busiest of days where I had maybe a big lab report coming up or a big assignment due the next day, I still found time to study for the exam that was maybe three or four weeks in the future. And so it was this daily habit and getting in the routine of studying every single day that allowed me to be so successful, I think. And I'm sure you've been there before. It's the day before the exam, you study really hard and you somehow still get a good grade. But a week or two after that, you'll find that you maybe know 20 or 30% of what you knew a week ago. So you get really good at regurgitating that information, but you aren't actually able to consolidate that info in your long-term memory. So by studying every single day in college and doing little chunks at a time, I find I still remember some of the stuff that I learned freshman and sophomore year. It was that spaced repetition that allowed me to really internalize all the information, which was great for the exam, but it's also great moving forward because I still remember a lot of small minutia from these courses. Now the next minor point I want to go into is weekends and how to effectively use them. So college is really important to still have a social life and balance. But I found out for me personally, I didn't have too much going on Saturdays and Sunday mornings. I would usually be at the library by like 8 or 8.30 a.m. And if I didn't leave the house to go to the library or something like that, I would be up and at them and studying at my apartment. And so after finishing all that productivity in the mornings on Saturdays and Sundays, I had the rest of the day to myself to either go to the gym, hang out with the friends, or do whatever I wanted to do. So using my time on Saturday and Sunday allowed me to really consolidate all the information from the prior week and it also allowed me to solidify and touch up on some topics from the coming week. The next tip I have for assignments might sound a little bit overkill. As soon as I got any single assignment or term paper given to me, I would start at the day it was assigned. Honestly, I find it was just really helpful to knock it out right away when the material was still fresh. And the final schedule tip that I have is know when to cut yourself off. So I almost never studied after 10 p.m. throughout my four years of college. And I set this cutoff time pretty early on because I knew after 9 or 10 p.m. my efficiency plummets. It goes to like 20% of what it was in the earlier hours. So I know it's better off when you just hang out, get some sleep, and pick it up again tomorrow because it's not an efficient use of my time to toil over this at night. So figure out when you work most optimally, carve out those chunks of time for your work, and don't stress out about not doing work during these times that you're reserving for yourself. And on that note, it's very important to reserve time for yourself. So make sure you etch out some chunks of time to do the things that you love doing besides just being a student. Now let's talk about some more hard and fast studying techniques that I swear by. The first thing I want to emphasize to you guys is interleaving. And this is a concept where you don't want to study these huge blocks individually, but rather you want to intersperse the topics that you're studying. So let's look at more concrete examples. Let's say I have three exams coming up. So if I exclusively am just going to block the subjects on day one, I'll do Orgo, day two I'll do Biochem, and day three I'll do Diffy Q. But that's not the way I studied, and I recommend you use something called interleaving. So instead of studying these big blocks, I'm breaking down these subjects into chunks. Now on day one, I'll do Orgo, 
Biochem DVQ. On day two, I'll do a different order. And on day three, I'll do an even different order. This might seem more difficult while you're studying because it seems like you're switching back and forth between topics, but honestly, it'll really help you solidify the information longer and it'll help you bring it to mind quicker on an exam. The next study habit that I've been using my whole life and I still use in med school is active recall. And so this is a concept that you're not just passively looking at your notes or lectures, but every single moment in time, you're testing yourself to really solidify this information. So let's say I need to look at some lecture notes to touch up on a topic. As I'm scrolling through my lecture notes, I'm constantly asking myself questions about these different topics. This concept of constantly testing yourself is known as the testing effect. Now the testing effect dictates that the more you test and quiz yourself on a topic that you're studying, the better off you will retain this information. So by looking at my lecture notes and constantly asking myself pointed and specific questions, I found that I was able to perform much better on exams because I already was quizzing myself. I already had that information solidified. So using active recall and constantly testing yourself while looking at something even passive like lecture notes is a great way to solidify information. Now on the topic of active recall, I also cannot emphasize enough how much you should be using practice exams and practice problems. Now this is really easy in a STEM field. So as an engineer, a lot of my classes just felt like a applied math. And as a result of that, I had a lot of practice exams given to me. And so the week before the test was pretty much just etched out for taking practice exams and touching up on these topics. Now these practice exams allow you to do two things. First, they allow you to identify your weak areas so you can touch up on them after you take that practice exams. It's really a low stakes environment for you to figure out what you know. And second, again, it's using that testing effects to solidify the information. So I did like 50% of my learning on these practice exams. By actually doing these exams, I was solidifying information and learning more. So if you have access to practice exams, do yourself a service and take those practice exams and do as many as you can. For some topics like physics, organic chemistry, biochemistry, I would take like five, six, seven practice exams for every single midterm I had. And I found this was a great way to really master all the topics that I needed to know. So we already talked about some concrete things. We talked about scheduling tips, study tips. So as a med student now, do I think getting a 4.0 GPA in undergraduate was worth it? Honestly, I don't really think so. So there were some classes where maybe I was on the verge of an A minus or an A. And at my school, an A minus was not a 4.0. It was like a 3.7 or whatever it was. The amount of time I had to put in to get the difference between that A minus and an A allowed me to solidify this 4.0. But in reality, if I had just taken one A minus, my GPA would have been what, like 3.999? So I guess it's cool to be able to say that I have a 4.0. No one can ever take that away from me. But I don't really know if it's worth it. So keep in mind, hindsight is 2020. 20. This is retrospective thinking. And perhaps I'm also a little biased because I've been socially deprived during coronavirus. But honestly, I think I could have spent more of my time hanging out with my friends and less of my time studying. So Saturday morning, maybe if I met up with a friend to get coffee or something or met up at a coffee shop to even study together, I think those memories I would have cherished more than Saturday mornings at the library where I was grinding over something that maybe I already knew. So in retrospect, maybe this wasn't worth it. I do think I could have gotten the 4.0 with less time put in. I don't think it would have in the end of the world if I didn't get that 4.0. I feel like above a 3.7 or a 3.8, you're pretty much good for anything. There's not a huge difference between a 3.8, 3.9, or a 4.0. You're showing that you're able to master these courses, but again, I don't think it really matters that you were able to master every single course that you were given, rather what you did with the time that you had. Extra critics are equally important and so are things like research. I think I'd be in the exact same position that I am in now if I had a 3.9, 3.8, a GPA in the same general ballpark. Now I'm proud of the work I did. I'm just not really sure if it was worth it. I said tell us 2020. It is what it is. I'm just happy and proud of the work that I've done. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you next time.